Yes. I call Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, thank you for the chance to have a call in the committee stage of the objectionable publications and indecency uh, legislation bill. Um, I did not sit on the select committee uh, which heard the submissions to this bill, but I've spoken in all stages of the debate so far. And, uh, and there are some uh, labourers supporting this bill, but there are some particular issues of concern uh, which I will speak to and, and echo some of the comments made by my colleague before me, Jacinda Ardern, um, around three particular issues, around the, uh, the lack uh, of the overarching strategy that, uh, within which this bill fits. And, uh, and, and, and an overarching strategy in a, in a, on a number of levels, actually, Mr Chair, because it's a strategy which actually deals with um, children and, uh, and, and abuse of children and the, uh, and, and the way that the abuse of children is perpetuated online, and uh, online as well as in the physical environment. And unfortunately, and we have another bill before the House at the moment, the Harmful Digital Communications Bill, which was, uh, by all intents and purposes, was, was, was developed in, in isolation or in a separate um, way, which, which, in which there is uh, questions around how they mesh and, and how the issues that it raises align. Uh, so that's one of the issues around the over or the lack of an overarching strategy. Um, the other one is around, um, particularly around how laws that are created that that uh, are, that have an impact on the online environment actually align with laws in the physical environment. This, this is a particular concern of mine. You would have heard me speak about this on a number of occasions um, around the precedents that are being established with, um, without um, as what I consider to be the, the, uh, a really um, uh, thoughtful um, process that has actually allowed the real consideration of some of some of the impacts and and while I applaud the minister's um, uh, intent around addressing these issues I, I seek uh, and you know and I guess um, plead for the um, for the for the government to actually take a little bit more care when actually putting this these um, pieces of legislation in front of us that actually create offences in an, an online environment that don't necessarily mirror or um, aren't proportional to the um, to the physical enactment of, of uh, the actual abuse. And there is um, a difference, and, um, but there is also um, an alignment. And I, I think, um, I, I, I suspect that what we're going to see is, and I, we're already hearing, that concern from the judiciary, concern from the legal community, particularly around uh, some of the lack of thought that's gone into, um, into these things. I want to... Um, to talk to uh, clauses uh, four and five also um, around increased penalties um, and, or, and also around the possession of electronic publications. The, the, the specific issues that I want to uh, focus on is, is the increasing of penalties and the question that was raised by a number of submitters um, around whether or not this would act as a deterrent. So that the increase in penalties is, um, that this, this bill enacts is an increase in maximum penalties for possession, importing and exporting of an objectionable publication from five to ten years. So that's a doubling of the penalty. And the maximum penalty for the supplies distribution or making of an objectionable publication from ten to fourteen years. Uh, now, um, there were concerns raised at the select committee by the Dunedin Community Law Centre, the good old Dunedin Community yes. Law Centre oh. that submits on many pieces of legislation, and the Salvation Army, which, uh, who both pointed out that increasing 
um, the penalties for objectionable publications offences could distort relativity with other offences um, by treating some physical offending as being less serious than the depiction of that same offending. Mr Chair. Clear, Karen. Thank you. Um, and um, I know that my uh, colleague Jacinda Ardern touched on this as well. The Salvation Army submitted that this created an anomaly as physical crimes should be punished more severely than objectionable publications offences. And the Dunedin Community Law Centre suggested that this may send the wrong message to those physically abusing, ch abusing children. Now, I want to be quite clear here that I, um, I, in principle, don't have an objection to the increasing of penalties for the abuse of children um, in any environment, whether it be online or, or physical, as long as there is a, um, a due care taken to ensure that the relativities uh, in terms of the kinds of abuse are maintained and that there isn't the suggestion that, that <clears throat> one form of abuse, a physical form of abuse, is, is somehow being um, diminished in the process. And I think this is what the point that was being made by, um, by those two submitters. And in fact, um, um, Mr, uh, Mr Chair, the... the um, the regulatory impact statement itself raised this issue and said that there was um, there was not sufficient, it was difficult to predict the effect of an increase in the maximum penalty for an offence. And they gave a range of, um, of, uh, of, of reasons for that and they gave some evidence around the numbers of people that had been um, uh, convicted over an eight-year period between 2004 and 2011, 393 people convicted of uh, an objectionable publication offence. 33% um, of them were sentenced to a term of imprisonment. Of those 33%, 40% um, of less than, uh, I think, 14 cases actually um, received a term of imprisonment that was less than 40% of the maximum available sentence. Um, they also pointed out that there were low rates of recidiv recidivism and uh, where during that 10 year period only eight people had been convicted of a repeat objectionable publication um, offence. Now, I guess my question is, and I refer back to the Salvation Army's uh, submission in this, is that they, they questioned whether the increased sentences will actually work as a deterrent and, uh, and they submitted that, uh, that this should be closely monitored. So I have a question for the Minister and I hope that she does take a call. And the question is, is what is the process for that monitoring to take place? Is that um, included in uh, the strategy around this legislation and, and will we will we be seeing close monitoring of that? And uh, we're not opposing this measure, but what we are asking is for some further clarification um, around it. So um, turning quickly to the possession of an electronic publication, I think as my colleague Jacinda Ardern said that um, this amended the Film, Videos and um, Publications Classification Act uh, to, to provide that possession includes intentionally viewing without knowingly downloading or saving. Now this is a new, very new provision. So you don't have to, so you can receive it. And if you're looking at it, you don't have to download it um, and you don't have to save it. By the mere act of seeing it, intentionally you're, create, you're um, committing a crime. And I think this is an interesting um, part of the bill and I, you know, and I raise that because this seems to me to be a really, um, uh, this, is part of, this is the updating for modern technology part of the bill where we, we really are looking at the way people are using technology and how, um, what, what that's doing to uh, impact on the legislation that's coming before us. And again, um, the um, submissions before the select committee can, c covered this covered this part of the um, the bill quite considerably, and um, and 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 really did uh, have a have a good look at it. And I, I think um, I, I think that um, that there was a um, there was quite a, 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 a 
considerable amount of discussion within the select committee and also by the, the officials, which, which gave it quite a lot of um, um, attention to ensure that it aligns with common law and under which possession of objectionable material includes intentionally viewing. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. I call David Clendon.